Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing a pair of Disney themed books. The first up being uh, Long Live the Pumpkin Queen by Shea Earnshaw and Tales from the Haunted Mansion by Amicus Arcane. Long Live the Pumpkin Queen by Shea Earnshaw continues the story of the Nightmare Before Christmas following Jack and Sally who are newly married. Sally is feeling overwhelmed by her responsibilities as the Pumpkin Queen of Halloween Town. She loves Jack and would love to just travel to holiday towns with him rather than feeling confined in a gilded cage. Fleeing from her responsibilities, Sally accidentally lets loose the Sandman from Dreamtown, causing all the inhabitants from every world to suddenly fall asleep. Sally is suddenly alone, the only one awake, and the only one who must take action and restore the holiday towns from their unending sleep. This was so much fun, you guys. Yeah, is is it great literature? No, but it's still fun. If you love all things Nightmare Before Christmas, I think you'll really like this. Enjoy it, hopefully. Uh, I, I have definitely always hoped that Tim Burton would just randomly one day be like, hey, I want to do a sequel to The Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> um, th this book is the next best thing. <laughs> Um, this pretty much takes place directly after the events of The Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, Jack and Sally are newly married. They're spending their honeymoon at Valentine's Town, <laughs> uh, which is hilarious. The two of them, these creepy looking people in Valentine's Town, it's pretty hilarious. Um, and yeah, they, they return home to Halloween Town and Sally, uh, she would just like to spend time with Jack. You know, that's all she wants. Um, but yeah, all of a sudden, it's a couple weeks from Halloween, and she all of a sudden has these new responsibilities as the Pumpkin Queen, and what that means, and what she has to do in order to get ready. And uh, yeah, all of a sudden, things are kind of being thrown at her, and she feels really overwhelmed and not sure what to do. And more than anything, she's very skeptical about her abilities, and she doesn't think she can do it. And she she's starting to think... Is this a mistake? Maybe I should not have married Jack <laughs> uh, because I am clearly not the, the queen that this place needs. Um, so yeah, fleeing from her responsibilities because she's feel, feeling really overwhelmed. Um, she, she accidentally unleashes the Sandman, you guys. She, she uncovers this mysterious door that has not been seen in like centuries and uh, yeah, in doing so, she unleash unleashes the Sandman, and um, the next thing that happens, all of a sudden, all of the inhabitants of every world, all the different holiday towns, all of a sudden, everybody is asleep. But for some reason, Sally is the only one uh, awake, and she realizes, hey, uh, I, I need to get everybody uh, awake. <laughs> um, so this definitely poses a, a great challenge and, and whatnot for Sally. As a character and it's her journey of realizing that she's a lot more capable um, than what she's ever realized and whatnot and it, it is it's kind of her journey of self-discovery and like I said realizing what she's capable of and um, co coming to terms eventually it, will she be a good queen for, for Halloween Town and whatnot uh, yeah it, it's a story of her gaining confidence and self-worth and whatnot and uh, uncovering her hidden origins you guys, this this book definitely has some interesting origins for Sally, which may be hit or miss with some people, depending on how you've kind of always viewed Sally. So not only did I really enjoy what Shea Earnshaw was doing with Sally, uh, really fleshing her out, because yeah, in the cartoon, I mean, we don't really know a hell of a lot of about Sally when you think about it. The story, it's Jack's story. So I, I loved learning a lot more about Sally and her origins and how she feels about her, how, about herself, how she feels about Jack, you know. Um, but yeah, not only did I really enjoy all that, I also really enjoyed Shea Earnshaw letting us look through all of the ho holiday town trees. <laughs> because obviously in the movie, Nightmare Before Christmas, we just see Halloween Town and Christmas Town. <laughs> and this, we get to spend a prolonged amount of time in Valentine's Town, which is great. I loved that. Um, yeah, we get to see what the, um, uh, Fourth of, I guess, what was it called? Did, was it called Fourth, Ju Fourth of July town? I can't remember what it was called, but you know, that one for Fourth of July. We got to see that town. We got to see the um, um, the, the one with the four-leaf clover for, for uh, St. Patrick's Day. Um, yeah, Thanksgiving. Uh, 
it was great. I, I loved seeing all of the towns and kind of her unique look and spin, you know, really kind of taking kind of those visual cues what Tim Burton gave us with the, the movie and kind of applying that to what the other towns and its inhabitants would have looked like, which was great and interesting and fun, and I love that. Now, moving on to a few of my, my complaints with this book, because I definitely had some complaints, despite how much I really enjoyed this book. There were definitely some things that were kind of grating on me. Um, you know, we, we know that Sally is a ragdoll, you know, um, but Shea Earnshaw, her, just the vocabulary she would use with, with, um, with Sally, it just kept being rather redundant and repetitive in my eyes um like the 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 use of the words seams threads uh cotton linen leaves you know whatever sally's made of um fabric um just certain words were constantly over and over and over and over again repeated and it's like i get it sally is a rag doll she's not human i know that you don't have to keep reminding me you know, um, because yeah, seriously, like I said, the words fabric, thread, seams, um, I get it, <laughs> you know, you don't have to, it, it did, it, it seriously kind of reached a point, because it was grating on me so much, like on one single page, it's like I would sit and count how many times any variety of those words would be used to describe something that Sally was feeling or doing, you know, um, so yeah, that was a little frustrating for me. And that was something I didn't understand too. Why was Sally seen as so weird and such an oddity? Because that's how she viewed herself over the course of this novel. She felt of herself her she felt herself like she was an oddity um in this world. But Halloween Town has so many creepy inhabitants. For crying out loud, Jack is a skeleton. Um, so why is Sally seen as so peculiar and weird? I didn't quite understand that at times. And you yeah, guys, I gotta read you some passages uh from this book because like I said, though I like this book, especially some of the scenes between Jack and Sally, it was verging into like what I would call fan fiction territory. And let me kind of read some stuff to let you in on how, how what I'm trying to get at. Because it was just like, oh my god. <laughs> let me just put it this way. Jack and Sally, they have a relationship that was verging on pretty sexual in this book. Uh, fortunately, this is a young adult book. I found it in the young adult section. It's not a kid's book. I don't think you should probably let your children <laughs> read this book. I think you probably need to let teenagers pick this book up. Uh, but yeah, some of the material going on between Jack and Sally for a young adult book was getting pretty heavy and pretty steamy and a little sexual with these two. Uh, once again, Sally's a ragdoll and Jack's is, is a skeleton and it, it was kind of getting a little weird and awkward for me reading. I was like, oh my goodness. <laughs> Uh, I was like, is this what necrophilia feels like? Because that's what it felt like reading some of the stuff. I was like, is this what necrophilia feels like? <laughs> I climb over the narrow bench seat separating us and kiss him square on the lips, tasting the sugary sweetness of dark chocolate. He kisses me again, his hand tracing the seam along my right cheekbone. And then this one's pretty lengthy, you yeah, guys. He shifts closer, the boat rocking beneath us, and he kisses me again, the coolness of his lips, soothing my rumbling thoughts for the tiniest of moments. He kisses me deeper, wrapping his palm around my back, along the seam of my spine, and I feel anchored to him, my fabric flesh bound to the cold of his skeleton bones. His fingers find my neck, my jaw, and I feel myself breaking, melting, sinking beneath his touch, like he will never let me go, like we could stay this way forever, drifting down, chocolate river <laughs> who oh mercy you guys that's what i mean about some of the stuff uh okay it's not pornographic you know none of that's pornographic but still it's jack and sally you know two characters from you know my childhood that i love and like to see them in a in this manner just really like lovey-dovey and verging into like sexual territory it was like it was a little disturbing <laughs> seriously did anybody else read this book and feel oddly like both disturbed and turned on by it I don't know it was really confusing like I said is this what necrophilia feels like because Jack is a skeleton I was so confused <laughs> so you guys despite some of the oddities of this book some of the things that were a little frustrating like word choices and um, Jack and Sally's overly steamy moments together I, I still really highly enjoyed Long Live the Pumpkin Queen um, it was fun and entertaining. I love seeing more of Sally's story. Uh, I liked 
the fact that there's like another door, you know, into Dreamtown that has never been explored. No one even knows about it. And not that only that, but it's like hinted at that there's other holiday towns out there that have been lost through the centuries, which is interesting because I, th I think, I, I don't know if Disney Press is maybe hoping to spin this book out into a couple more books and explore other towns, you know, I don't know. Um, but, and yeah, I loved the use of the Sandman in this in this uh, novel as well. That was just totally cool, totally worked. I loved it. Uh, yeah, seeing Sally really come into her own and build up her confidence. Uh, yeah, what are her origins? Um, yeah, it was great. You guys, if you love Nightmare Before Christmas, I definitely recommend checking this book out. Uh, it, it may be hit or miss with you. I definitely recommend checking out uh, the Goodreads reviews because the people who did not like this, they definitely had their reasons why they didn't like it, but the people who liked it really liked it. So moving on to the Tales from the Haunted Mansion series. This consists of four books and they are very much all standalone, um, but yeah, I'll read through all the synopsis for each of the books really quickly. In the fearsome foursome, four kids stumble across the Haunted Mansion. What follows is a night of spooks and scares, and each of them has a tale of terror that is told to them through the mansion's creepy librarian. Book two, Midnight at Madame Leota's. Feeling guilty about the death of his sister several years prior, William journeys to the haunted mansion with the hope of speaking to Madame Leota so he can see the spirit of his sister one last time. He encounters the mansion's librarian, who has some tales of terror to tell before William can continue on his quest. Book three, Grim Grinning Ghosts. Three thieves take a commission to deliver some mysterious items to the Haunted Mansion, where they meet the librarian who has some tales of terror to tell before the thieves can make a run for it. Book four, Memento Mori. The mansion's librarian is ready to retire, and he's seeking an individual who can tell the scariest story to replace him. I'm not going to spend too terribly much talking about the Tales from the Haunted Mansion series. Um, I'm not really the target demographic for these books. I quickly found out while I was reading these. Um, the target demographic, I would say, for this for some of books, um, it, it's definitely meant for children, not even a young adult audience. Um, definitely children. Um, children who, you know, it... it because it's Disney, because it's the Haunted Mansion, this is a safe way to introduce children to, like, the horror genre, if you will. Um, the horror that is going on in these books, it's very simple, very basic. Now, sometimes it can be a little, like, oh, a little gruesome. That's a little gruesome for a kid's book. <laughs> but still, it's all done in good good, good fun, good humor. Um nothing gets overly too dark and heavy um so so yeah it is it's definitely meant for children it's a, it's a safe comfortable space for parents to give their children to introduce them to the horror genre before like being like hey let's go watch chucky <laughs> or nightmare on elm street or i know what you did last summer you know this is a good place to start before you get into the heavy stuff <laughs> Uh, even Goosebumps, maybe before you even get like into Goosebumps, because I think Goosebumps is maybe just a tiny bit a step <laughs> ahead of, of these. Like start your kids off with these and then maybe move up into Goosebumps and then have them watch like um, um, uh, Are You Afraid of the Dark or something, you know. Um, so so yeah, the, these books, they're, they're very kid friendly. Like I said, the horror elements are not too over the top. Um, and yeah, each book pretty much kind of follows the same narrative framework, if you will. Um, like in this first book, we're introduced to four kids. They stumble across the Haunted Mansion. They meet the librarian. And the way the book is divided, um, the librarian tells them some sort of story that's related to them. Um, and then when that story's over, it goes back to the four kids and the librarian. Then he proceeds to tell another story. And then after that, it goes back to the Haunted Mansion. And it goes from there. And then all of the books in the series do that. There's like a frame narrative and the librarian is telling some sort of story. Um, and yeah, a lot of the stories in some way kind of relate to the, the Haunted Mansion to, to some degree. Now, what I particularly was not really into with this series, uh, what I was a little frustrated and disappointed with, because I am, I'm someone who loves Haunted Mansion. And I went into these books thinking they were going to be really entirely all about the Haunted Mansion, like focusing on a specific ghost, if you will, and how they wound up there, um, and like spending the entire time at the Haunted Mansion. Um, but 
the Haunted Mansion is not really in these books that much. Uh, it's it's only when you spend time with the librarian and whoever's stuck in the mansion, you know. Um, the tales do not take place in the Haunted Mansion, which I was a little frustrated with. Um, I, I don't know if I was thinking... Uh, I don't know. I think I might have had just grand idea, grandiose ideas in my head what was going to happen in these books. Um, I, you know, because a lot of times when, with ghost stories, uh, the, the person has to have, like, died on the property. You know what I mean? And so that's what I was kind of thinking. It was going to be the people, how they all wound up at the Haunted Mansion to begin with and how they died and how they got stuck there, you know? Um, but that's not the case. A lot of the stories almost really have nothing to do with the Haunted Mansion. The Haunted Mansion... It's like treated as this mysterious entity that the ghosts, for whatever reason, once they die, once the people die and they, they become ghosts, for whatever reason, they just travel to the Haunted Mansion. With no rhyme or reason, they just go there. And that was kind of like, what? I don't get it. Why? <laughs> so, like I said, I'm not going to spend too much time talking about these books because I was definitely not the target demographic. I definitely recommend maybe giving these to your children if you have children, if you want to introduce them to the horror genre. Um, they're fun and entertaining, for even for me as an adult. I, I appreciate that they were fun and entertaining. They weren't boring. They didn't drag. They definitely moved very quickly. And, yeah, if anything, they were a nice little read to read around, you know, the spooky month of, of October and if if anything it helped really boost my Goodreads challenge up because I, I have to read 50 books this year for my Goodreads challenge and these were a nice way to kind of boost me up and move me along because I was behind. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, check out these books if you have a little one. Uh, if, if you're an adult like me, I, I kind of really don't recommend getting into them because I think you're going to be sadly disappointed with them. So you guys, that is it for my thoughts and feelings on these two Disney-themed books. Um, let me know in the comments below if you have read any of these books, whether you love them, hated them, just let me know. So that's it for this video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this video, you may like these other videos. Bye, guys.